19 kids are dead. 19 children are dead. And so to my Republican colleagues, I ask, who are you here for? Are you here for our kids or are you here for the killers? Because if you were here for the kids, you would do all you could to protect the next school shooting that's about to happen. And we know what's gonna happen in America. You would vote to raise the age on purchasing an assault rifle. You would vote to ban high capacity magazines. You would vote to require safe storage. And you would vote to address ghost guns, which are ravaging communities across America. But if you're here for the killers, you would do everything to make it easier for the next school shooting to happen. And Mr. Jordan, to say we are trying to dramatically change the country, dramatically change the country, if trying to make sure that no more kids are put in the ground with a Superman coffin means dramatically change the country, guilty. That's why we're here. Kids are going in the ground today, and you call that trying to dramatically change the country. Why aren't you trying to dramatically change the number of dead kids going into the ground, Mr. Jordan? Who are you here for, the kids or the killers? My Republican colleagues are here for carnival games. They say it's about mental health. Okay, we try and fund mental health, they vote against it. They say it's about schools. We try and fund the schools, fund the teachers. They vote against it. They say it's about policing. $300 million in the American Rescue Plan for community policing. They all voted against it. And they don't want to listen to the police. If they listen to the police, they'd listen to the major city's chiefs who have called for background checks, red flag laws, banning bump stocks, and banning high capacity magazines. My favorite, it's about the family. We need to address the family issues in America. But we don't want to help feed a family. We're going to make it harder for kids to live on food stamps. We don't want to help a family learn. We're going to go after teachers in America. We don't want to help kids go to college. We don't want to give them jobs. We're going to vote against the infrastructure and jobs bill. And then they say that laws don't work. But they have no problem crafting laws to take away a woman's right to make her own health care decision. That law must work. They have no problem going after laws to ban drugs. There's plenty of laws on the books to ban drugs. But no, it's all about the person. Laws don't work when you have evil in our country. That's what they tell us. And then they tell us that we're in a country where you have violent video games, mental health problems, schools that can't be secured, and too many gun-free zones. And their solution to that is to put more of the most dangerous weapons into that mix. That's insane. They're also out of touch with the overwhelming majority of gun owners in America. An organization called 97% just put out a poll that said among gun owners, and they only polled gun owners, 86% support background checks, 76% support safe storage, 67% support red flag laws. Those are gun owners. So who are you here for? Our kids or the killers? I'm here for people like Alex Navarro. She's a Moms Demand Action Leader in the San Francisco Bay Area. And last week, after I convened a meeting among my constituents and people like Fred Guttenberg and Dr. Joe Sacrin, an emergency room physician at Johns Hopkins, Alex Navarro told my constituents that her six-year-old daughter, after Uvalde, after seeing the images behind me, said to her, Mom, what picture are you going to use for me? What picture are you going to use for me? That's what children are asking their parents across America, because they don't believe they're going to come out alive. What picture are you going to use for me? We're supposed to be the protectors. We're supposed to be here for the kids. And so to my colleagues today who flew in town, came to work, got ready to argue, my question is, why did you come here for, at all? Why did you come here at all? If you're not here for the children, why don't you go to the funeral of the killer? Because that's the only place where the killer is being celebrated. We're here to get things done and protect our kids. What's your job? I mean, what do you even say beyond that?
Eric Swalwell decimated every single BS talking point put forward by Republicans. The most effective point is this. We all know that Republicans will blame anything but the guns. We've sat by and listened to them for the last few weeks while they blamed video games, doors, pornography, mental health issues, godlessness, fatherlessness. Now, we know it's the guns. That's clear. Every other country on the planet has video games and doors and porn and mental health issues. They don't have mass shootings like we do. It's the guns. That's the difference. But let's just grant Republicans the idea that it's all those other things. It's not, but let's just humor them. Then why aren't they addressing any of those issues either? Why don't they fund mental health programs? Why does a state like Texas rank 50th out of 50 on mental health care? If we need to quote unquote harden the schools, why do they cut school funding? If we need more police, why did Republicans refuse to vote for the American Rescue Plan, which included $350 million for state and local governments that helped fund the police? They're so quick to train your attention away from the obvious problem of the guns that they haven't considered the fact that they won't address the scapegoats either. I also love that Swalwell hit the laws don't work argument. We can't possibly pass any gun laws because only the good guys follow the laws and the bad guys will still get a gun. The shooter in Uvalde, Texas tried to get a gun before he was 18 when he was legally able to purchase it. He tried to get his sister to purchase him a gun. She refused. So what did he do? He had to wait. He had to wait because it wasn't legal, meaning that the laws, as unrestrictive as they were, actually worked. And if they were more restrictive, imagine how many 18, 19, 20 year old shooters would be prevented from getting their hands on weapons. If laws didn't work, we wouldn't have them. You don't not pass laws because someone might break them. And if that's your governing philosophy, then you shouldn't be anywhere near Congress. And what's especially ironic on that point is that Republicans use that exact opposite logic for abortion restrictions. Now, first of all, there is no equivalency between a woman's right to her own bodily autonomy and unfettered access to weapons of war. Remember, even the most conservative Supreme Court justices have said that the Second Amendment is not unlimited, including Antonin Scalia, arguably the most conservative justice on the court at that time. But still Republicans fell over themselves passing abortion restrictions anyway, knowing full well that the women who will be impacted are women of color and poor women who can't travel to other states for abortions, and that those women will likely try to get black market abortions anyway, which aren't safe. But God knows that Republicans pass those laws anyway. There was no talk of, oh, but they'll find a way around it. Nope. Those laws were okay to pass, but basic common sense gun reform supported by 90% of Americans? We couldn't possibly do that. Makes sense, huh? And look, all of this is common sense. We know that Republicans' excuses are BS. Even Republican voters know that their excuses are BS. 90% of Americans support a number of these basic common sense gun safety reforms. 90%. But Republicans aren't interested in following the will of their constituents any more than they're interested in stopping these shootings. If they were, they would do something, anything to fix them. So when they clutch their pearls that we're asking why they're helping the next shooter, remind them that they haven't actually lifted a finger to keep anyone safe. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on the screen. And to support my work beyond that, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I cover the week's most important stories and interview the biggest players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, and so many more. The link is also right here on this screen. And finally, to take action yourself and sign petitions on the most important issues, go to briantylercohen.com petition.